Yes, it's, you know, traditionally, uh, the healthcare system in our country, at least the delivery of healthcare system, uh, has been, uh, as far as uh, uh, primary medical, uh, medical care, secondary medical care, and tertiary medical care, uh, has been uh, uh, done through two parallel systems. One is the government health uh, system, and the other is a private health system, which have, to a great extent, uh, function independent of each other. And uh, this is something which uh, has been, uh, if you see, before independence, uh, the predominant player was the government health sector. Post-independence, particularly 20, 30 years ago, there has been this uh, growth of the private health sector, which has been complementing the, the public health sector. Uh, so there has been attempts before much how we can actually uh, create policies to to complement each other, to maximize and optimize the facilities which are available in both the sectors. Since I took office, I have uh, actually very clearly enunciated four directions in which the ministry will go. The first direction is, of course, to give emphasis on what I said, preventive medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, for so long, I, even in our budgetary allocation, the amount which has been allocated for preventive health care is very small. We allocate less than 5% of our total budget for preventive health care. Uh, all of our indices show that uh, Malaysia has got serious health issues. Uh, for example, obesity. Uh, we have uh, nearly 15% uh, of our population which is actually obese and uh, which is a fairly high number. Uh, for diabetes, for hypertension, hovering around 30 over percent. And uh, so these figures tend to show that we are, uh, there is a need for Malaysians as such and the health system to actually promote very seriously the idea of healthy living so that we can actually at least combat the major diseases which are giving us the major burden of healthcare cost. We will strengthen primary care, increase the capacity of doctors in primary care, increase their knowledge and skill levels, and then uh, also through them try to develop an effective community-based health system. That means f rather than being over-dependent on a hospital-based health system, uh, we can to a great extent see what component of that which is dependent on the hospitals could be shifted back to the community. So if you do that, one, the community will be actively involved in managing their health. Number two, uh, it will reduce the, the cost and burden because managing people in hospitals is a very expensive affair. It's a very, very expensive affair. So there is a need for us to look at this from a planning point of view and how we are going to do it. And uh, I have announced actually an attempt to increase our bed strength to about 2.5 beds per 1,000 population, which at the present moment is about 1.81. So, but to, to achieve that itself, to that ratio which I've announced, we will require another 15,000 beds overall throughout the country. So, and when you increase the bed space in that number, that of course has to come associated with the other infrastructure, right? You need to, uh, equipments, you need facilities, you need, so that is one, that, that's the third prong of attack. The fourth prong will be uh, a similar plan of the management of the manpower, which is related, related to the management of the health uh, services itself. Uh, when you talk about manpower in health services, it's a very broad area. We're starting from super specialists, uh, to specialists, to ordinary doctors, down to nurses, uh, lab technicians, technicians, uh, and whole spectrum of people who fall into that industry. So this also has to be, as far as, if you take this one, we know that two areas uh, which are concern for us is the increase in the large number of doctors who are returning mm -hmm. uh, from colleges to actually study, uh, to work in our health services. Uh, uh, our ratio to doctor to ra uh, population ratio 
uh, has improved tremendously. Uh, uh, the WHO says the ideal citizen in the most developed countries is one doctor for 400 persons, 400 people, but that is uh, in, in the most developed countries. But uh, we actually have reached, uh, I think, we have already reached one doctor for 660 uh, uh, population. But while we have reached the number of doctors in that ratio, our infrastructure which was built all these years was not meant to absorb that amount of doctors. So we got a big gap there. Mm -hmm. so, so this is the reason why unless and until the infrastructure development is expedited, we will not be able to actually absorb this number of doctors and provide them the ideal kind of place for them to work, right? That is one. And the other thing as far as doctors is concerned is there is, uh, there is an issue of, of, uh, of uh, distribution. You see, if you look, there will be over-distribution of doctors in the very urban sectors like the Klang Valley and probably lesser distribution in places like Sabah and Sarawak. Very strangely, unlike the other professions, uh, in which a person comes right from university and then he directly goes and seeks an employment and he becomes responsible for himself and the management based on his ability. But in the medical profession, we have taken we we can sort of taken up the responsibility of uh, for long of that even after graduation, we know no chap after degree is fit, fit enough to be thrown into the open market. So they have to be treat. They have to be trained in a controlled environment, and uh, and uh, for long the strength of the Malaysian health system was based on our capacity to provide the training. So if Malaysians doctors are good at providing high quality health service, is because of the training which we were able to give them in the Ministry of Health. Once they come in in the first two years, and then they are during their post years, and that sort of sort of actually molds them into fit into the working environment. Although the budget for the Ministry of Health is uh, 22 billion a year, which works out to approximately 9 to 10 percent of the total budget, but it is definitely not sufficient. It is, it is really grossly insufficient. And, uh, but on the other hand, we also know our constraints in asking the government to give us more. So this is an issue which we think uh, how to find so while but if you look at the overall public expenditure on on health care although the government spends 22 billion on health care the people uh, in the private sector through mainly out of pocket expenditure bulk of it i think as high as 80 to 85 percent is paid out of, out of pocket <coughs> they are spending another 17 billion so altogether, we, we are spending about 39 billion, 39 to 40 billion. We compare both two. So when initially there were plans mooted, say how can we actually try to find some bridge, mm -hmm. which will bridge this so that we can rationalize and optimize this usage of this 40, 45, 40 billion, 42 billion in a manner which will complement. At the present moment, we are committed to improve the effectiveness and the management of the resources which we have. That means what I'm looking at is how effectively can we manage the 22 billion which we get? Can we add value to that money which we have through more effective management? So that is what we are, our main, main emphasis is on.